Hi everyone and welcome along. I'm afraid today you don't get to see my lovely face um, just because we've got slight uh, limited capacity today because um, our lovely dog Crumble, who you all know and love, um, took a bit of a tumble this week and is he's absolutely fine. He's on the mend, he's doing well, but it just means we have to keep a close eye on him at all times. So Ant is downstairs uh, with Crumble and um, so we haven't got our, our intros filmed this week but it's just you and me and I hope that's not too much of a disappointment. Um, we're going to paint bluebirds today. Now I'm going to be really honest with you and and I had never seen a bluebird before and when we googled the image Ant said and I swear no word of a lie he's like is that just a photoshopped robin? Because we could not believe the amazing vivid blue colour. But also with the very robin-like uh, red, red breast. So that was just an amazing discovery for us. Um, bluebirds, I, I don't really think we get those in the UK. So this is going to be a, a fun first for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint them in the style of our robins um, that we all love to paint together. Um, so I've just mixed up yellow ochre, cadmium orange and cobalt blue deep here. But the first thing I need is a really, really translucent pale colour for the base of our bird body. Now in the past with the robins I've talked about just using up like the shadowy dregs in various palettes of your, uh, wells of your palette. However, to be more specific, if you have got yellow ochre mixing in with a the tiniest, tiniest bit of a gray tone, like a Payne's gray, or a little bit of burnt sienna Payne's gray, maybe even a tiny bit of Mars black, but essentially we're creating a very, very pale, slightly warm, shadowy color, okay? And that is the base for our bird. And I'm going to use my size eight brush to start with. Um, and just like with the robins, I'm going to use that color to create a little sort of potato-y shape from my first bird. And just like with the robins, I'm going to just add a little bit of a head protruding out. And that's all we really need. I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, I'm going to take my size four. And just sort of allowing this to take a second to just dry a little bit. And I'm going to begin by placing in some cadmium orange. Now, I've noticed with the bluebird that the, the orange chest sort of, there's a little sort of d upturned triangle of white uh, beneath, and then the orange sort of comes down over the front like that. And then I'm gonna get my cobalt blue deep. I'm just gonna come over the top and give a little flick of a tail and then a nice little wing. And the other thing I did notice actually was that the bluebirds do have a very, very faint black tip on the ends of their feathers if we're gonna do this properly. So that is our first bird. Um, if you aren't really sure what I'm doing here, it's very loose watercolour style, it's, it's not very clear. Um, go and have a look at my watercolour robins tutorial because all will be revealed. Um, we're gonna be turning these funny little blobs into beautiful little birds just in sort of very simple loose watercolour stages. Okay, let's try another one. I'll get my big brush out now. do one down here. So this time I'm going to start with my sort of slightly uneven potato shape and this time we're going to have the head popping up over the top like that. 
you know, it's really important that your the amount of water and wetness you've got going on here is not too over the top, that you don't want puddles of water. Maybe from the side we can see the light reflecting in there and we really want that to just seep in and uh, just, yeah, just settle a little bit. So whilst I do that, pick up my cadmium orange. You know what I could do? Just add a little bit more. There we go, that's kind of fun. Because that's the cool thing is it stays wet for so long. You can go in and add tiny bits, but I do try and encourage you not to sort of overwork and mess around with your paintings too much. Okay, so I've got quite a, it's quite a concentrated amount of cadmium orange and you can see that it really does die down. And as always, there's a, a hair on my brush usually crumble. Okay, right. So this time I'm seeing the, the front of the bird. Seeing that red breast. I'm gonna clean off my brush, pick up some cobalt blue deep and then coming over the top, and then, and as I said, all will be revealed once we put some little feet and beaks. But I'm rather pleased with these. So let's paint another one. So the cool thing is, is you start off each time with this sort of simple potato shape. And then just depending on where you choose to put your head, you can create really lovely different kind of poses of birds because I do love how birds kind of bob along on a branch and sort of really dip and weave and change their positions. And this time, I think we're going to have going a little bit low down. We definitely want to uh, allow for that water to seep in, so I think I'll just do uh, the other one, the other one here. So for this lower one here, I've actually managed to use very little water. So I'm going to go straight in with this one down here and get the color in. And what happens is because the actual page is dry but the circle is wet you get a really crisp outer edge but you get these wonderful blends happening inside the circle okay and we'll finish off so you see how wet that one still is it's amazing isn't it how much of a difference just the tiniest amount of water can make. So this time the blue coming down over the top. Okay, so we're just going to add the little black tips to the wings and tail feather and like look how messy like you can be really really basic and simple with this but I think it's got a real amount of charm and character okay so we'll let these dry and then we'll add the uh, add the eyes and the beak and the feet and all of a sudden we'll have four jolly little bluebirds right then so I'm going to choose a four tenths out of my set of brushes and because these are just simple birds we're just going to do the details with a little bit of black um, so my Mars black 
here's the one I go to most of the time. It's just because I, I ended up getting a tube of Mars Black. I haven't really looked into all the different options we could go for, but it works really nicely. So anyway, the beak, you see where this head just drops in there? That is where we want to get our beak in. And the beak sort of comes into the head quite far and then follow that along and just that's just a case of using the fine tip of the brush and just squishing it down and then the legs come from really quite far back and then like I said we're just going to do it nice and simple one, two, three, and then fourth one on the back. So there we go. Let's have a look at this guy. So I like the idea of this guy sort of, he's looking over his shoulder. So the beak is there. The eye is there. And then maybe he's on a little branch. So we might have one leg up there, one leg down here, then let's have a look at these ones. So this guy is also looking over his shoulder, so it's another good opportunity to have a practice. So. And I'm just starting by using the sort of, just angling my brush quite low, squishing it down and, and bringing it up to the point, but I have also done it where I've started with the point. The thing, if you want, just add a little bit more. Legs coming right from the back. And then, I just think it's absolutely amazing how you can get all that thickness from the tiniest brush in my kit. Okay, and then last one, we're gonna have this guy looking down. So first off, actually, I'm gonna do the legs for this one because sometimes it helps you decide where you're going to put the beak and the eyes. And there we go. Some really simple, lovely little bluebirds. I really hope this will be a fun project to do if you're feeling a little bit uninspired um, and just want to create something really jolly. And trust me, you will be painting these over and over and over again. They're pretty addictive. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, and don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this one and comment below to let me know how you got on. And of course, don't forget to tag me, De Winton Paper Co, on social media. Instagram's the place where you find me the most because I'd love to see your paintings. Um, and of course, if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell beneath it. Okay until next time, bye!